Finger pointing. That might be the best way to describe the relationship between drivers and bicyclists. Each, well, with regularity, pointed the other for breaking traffic laws and causing some conflicts. Yeah, but how often does it really happen and why? That is what a new study is seeking to find out. And tonight, only on News 3, reporter Dave Delosher has the story behind this Scofflaw biking survey. It's a huge issue. Uh, cycling is growing in Wisconsin. And as the number of cyclists and the numbers of drivers go up, sometimes the road doesn't seem big enough for them both. So I do think there's this, uh, this constant tension. Some people are just impatient. And that can lead to finger pointing each, thinking the other is breaking the law. Well, sharing the road is a big deal, and I think we've got a real car culture, and people are in a hurry. I see bicyclists blow through the stop signs and stoplights all the time, and. If they want to ride in the street, they should follow the same rules. So who is right about who is wrong? When you look at the transportation system, I mean, everybody is a criminal. And Wes Marshall, a civil engineering professor at the University of Colorado at Denver, is trying to figure out why. For the last six months, he has been surveying the habits and opinions of drivers, pedestrians, and bicyclists. He went into this not knowing how much interest there would be. Okay, so we're hoping to get a 1,000 or so people, but we, we ended up getting over 18,000 people taking the survey. <laughs> They got responses from every continent, but more from places where cycling is popular. We had a, a lot of people from Wisconsin, a ton of people from Madison in particular. And while cyclists and drivers like to point fingers at each other, the survey shows the actual scofflaw might be the person in the mirror. If you look at the overall data set, everybody at some point admitted that they break the law at some in the system. So everybody is sort of a criminal when you start with, with that. And the reality of that can end badly. This cyclist, who was part of an organized ride, was seriously injured by a truck driver who was ticketed for unsafe passing. Well, if they're passing this close to you, you're going to get clipped. Heel toe. And then there is Jean Stover, who is learning how to walk all over again after she was hit on her bike while stopped at a red light. It was so confusing because I thought, what happened here? I was stopped. <laughs> It turns out while Jean stopped at the red light, the other person didn't. But she wasn't hit by a car. She was hit by another cyclist. Well, we have to look for solutions. You know, uh, bicyclists aren't going away. Drivers aren't going away. And at the end of the day, Professor Marshall believes that solution may already exist in communities like Madison, where infrastructure for cyclists is being added. As cities have added more bike infrastructure, so I've seen studies from like Chicago and New York, and have they put in like cycle tracks or lights specifically for the biker, like the rates of cyclists obeying the laws went from like 30% to 80%. And as communities work to resolve conflicts between cyclists and drivers, the Scofflaw survey hopefully will provide a map for getting there. We're just trying to understand and let the data tell us what's really happening here. In Madison, this is Dave Delosier, WISC News 3. Now, Professor, Professor Marshall is in the process of analyzing the results of those 18,000-plus <laughs> surveys. Yeah, he's got some work to do. Yeah. Uh, once he has an overall picture of how often and why drivers and cyclists break laws, he will break it down by region. He says given the high number of responses from Wisconsin, he'll be able to give us uh, a good picture of what is going on here. Not a surprise. Not a surprise, yeah. From Wisconsin. Let's